So a little while back, Josh Jensen contacted me on Facebook and asked me to take a look at his colors. Uh, and he sent me a few links. And a few weeks later, I you know, finally managed to get around to take a look at it. And I pulled a couple of his pieces and I recorded a video where I critiqued those pieces uh, and gave him a few suggestions on how he might improve them. Um, I felt uh, doing a video was a more efficient way than trying to type out my thoughts. Uh, but anyway, so I sent him the video earlier this week and he gave me permission to publish it on my YouTube channel so that uh, everyone else can take a look and maybe learn something as well. So uh, the following video is that critique of his colors. Uh, if you would like to look at even more of his colors, um, I'll have some links uh, to his stuff in the description. And um, so here is my critique of uh, Josh Jensen's colors. Hey Josh, so I was looking through the pieces from the uh, links that you gave me. And I have to say, uh, you've got some top-notch stuff right there. And I think, you know, and you have a really uh, pleasing palette as well. Uh, some good rendering approaches, and I think if you wanted to, uh, you could start aggressively putting together sample uh, packages and sending them off to publishers and editors, and you probably would have a good chance of landing uh, a paying gig at a decent publisher right now if you wanted to. Uh, but anyways, I went through your pieces and I picked three that I think uh, best display you know both some of your strengths as well as your weaknesses. And I just figured I'd just go through them and identify each of those and help you improve even more uh, going forward. So the first piece I picked is this one here. Um, uh, things that you know, the things I like about it, first of all, I love the way uh, you approached the figure. I like the colors on them, and I think it looks great. I like the textures you're using, and I also really love the um, choice to go monochromatic on this background on the last panel here. Um, uh, but uh, the first thing though, when I looked at this page, at first I didn't know what was happening. Uh, which of course is a problem at, like right off the bat uh, until I realized and that there's this black space, this black space up here, and I realized that's actually the first panel and then I realized okay second panel is a character who we're looking through the point of view of opening their eyes and then this guy's slapping them and then down here he's getting ready to throw water on basically the viewer uh, so once I saw that then I started to question some of your color choices uh, and while you know as just a plain palette it looks relatively pleasing but I don't understand the logic behind having pink here and then purple down to blue with yellow windows. Um, now it's, it's not a bad idea to you know shift the colors in the background and creating transitions. Um, that works but if I were to do it I probably would reverse it uh, where he's opening his eyes things would be a little bit foggy I'd do something a little bit cooler um, while things are still out of focus and then as he's getting slapped and getting ready to have water going on I'd make it more intense I don't know if I would go all the way to the pink I think that might be a little bit too strong for the scene um, but maybe like a cool purple and um, keeping the figure the same I think is a good idea like you did um, but on the third panel since there's all these blacks it's a challenge to make this pop, uh, but that's what you're probably should be aiming to do. And I understand how the windows create a nice open area to create a pop color, um, but in context with the storytelling, I think it's actually competing with where the focus is supposed to be, which should be, you know, him about to ready to throw the bucket of water. So I probably would keep the windows monochromatic as well. So I'm thinking maybe you know using this blue up here um, maybe keep it you know that color the same in the background here and then making it slightly more intense in the background here to help pop out the figure. Uh, that's why I would change on that page. 
right, um, moving on to the second piece. Now this piece I think might actually be the weakest that you had on the link that you showed me. Um, but that's not entirely your fault because you're handicapped immediately because the composition of this piece is pretty weak. It's very symmetrical and very static. I mean you have uh, Nightwing with a very symmetrical pose. You split him in half, it's almost identical on either side. Batman's also very symmetrical. Uh, then you have you know, Batgirl on one side with Red Hood and Robin bouncing on the other side. Uh, and even, you know, you got the, this big moon right in the center and the buildings making a triangle. So, you know, it's very symmetrical, very static, kind of boring. Um, and also, I mean, really, because with this arrow that the buildings make and then this big circle, this is where, you know, the eye is going to be drawn to. And I don't necessarily think that that's where it should be drawn to. So already you're competing with the artwork on this one. This is a piece where definitely the colors need to save it um, and you are actually already halfway there because I like you know you have this like greens and like kind of bluish greens in the background and then you're using the uh, purple reflective lighting with you know a warmer yellowish lighting coming from this angle or from this side um, to help pop it off um, but there's a you know, a few mistakes I think you've made that you could make this a lot stronger. Uh, first, I'll start with the background. Um, zooming in, first thing I noticed with this cross hatching and, you know, these smudges going through here, to me, uh, this is indicating that, you know, it's supposed to be a lot of clouds, fogs, and smoke coming up, but you have stars. And even the stars are even strong through the building. I think this is supposed to be smoke here, maybe clouds over here. So um, the rendering in the background is, is an issue. I would make it you know, a lot more atmospheric with smoke and clouds coming up. Um, the moon, again, like I said, this is going to be drawing the attention. So I would try to push the moon back. Right now you have it yellow. I'd make it... Uh, more of a blue or bluish like a light bluish green to push it back into the background so it's not competing with the foreground um, and in all I would say that um, you know these figures here probably probably should be the focus that's what you want to have pop um, so I make Batman more of a silhouette um, like I said, like the purples here do help pop the foreground and the middle ground out from the background, um, but you're running into some problems like here on the leg, for instance, kind of blends in with the purples on Batman's shoulder. And also, you know, the purples down here in the bottom of Red Hood kind of blends in with the purple on Robin's arm. Um, so... But again, um, you know, zooming in with the way it's drawn, I think it's supposed to be more atmospheric. I think the backgrounds should be blending into the bottom of Red Hood here, which would already then separate him from Robin. Uh, kind of like in the same way um, here with Night uh, Nightwing's leg. You know, you have the you know the background blending into the leg where the leg starts disappearing. I would do the same thing down here, and you probably could also extend that to the bottom of Batgirl's cape too, uh, which would help. And then, you know, like Batman uh, should be more of a foreground element. I would make him more of a silhouette. So the purple here, I'd probably make darker. Help separate it from the purple on her, on her leg. Um, I'd also watch the rendering a little because, like, this right here starts making his head look a little lumpy. Also, like, right here. I'd also watch out um, with the whites. I mean, the whites are always going to pop the most out of everything, so I would use them strategically, but even zoomed here, you know, this is drawing my attention. These, 
are drawing my attention, all these are drawing my attention, and this is drawing my attention. So I wouldn't make all these highlights quite so white. Um, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't make them any brighter than these highlights. Um, also, you know, again, I talk about making uh, Batman more of a silhouette here in the front. Um, while, like, this area is dark, it's warm, and same here with the bat symbol, it uh, has, like, warm lighting come on here. I would make that cooler so that you're looking past Batman and looking at the figures here. And like I said, you already, uh, with the purples, it's a good idea, and the warm yellowish lighting is a good idea. It just needs a little bit more refinement, a bit of a, a stronger color strategy to, so that uh, you're not fighting so much with the um, static composition. All right. And moving on to the third piece, this one I actually think is probably one of your stronger pieces. I love a lot of the color quality that you're doing on your figures, especially like right here and like right here. Those look really nice. I also like, uh, once again, your rendering is very strong. The, you know, the cuts, you know, are very uh, visually pleasing to look at. Um, and it fits with the line art that's presented. So, I enjoy that. Um, though, a few things, because just with the way that the uh, composition of the page is laid out, and you know the way that uh, we read should be going left to right. So the eye should be going like this, this, and off the page onto the next page. Um, but since you're also using these really strong saturated backgrounds, it's kind of fighting the eye. So I find I'm actually going like from here and then down here. And I'm kind of missing this over here. So it's because of those like strong saturated pinks. So I would probably do a different color choice in the background so it's not competing with the figures quite as much. I mean, using saturated colors is good, but you also want to have um, some contrast to make sure that the, you know, the figures are popping off in the background. Um, similarly, in this last panel here, even though I like the way like the flash uh, pops off of this green, the green is still really strong um, and maybe a little overpowering. I might consider, well, maybe a cooler green or a lighter green or a less saturated green. Um, also a few things. I don't quite understand the logic of having these orange characters here. To me, they should be blending more into the background because right now they're kind of similar colors that you have like up in here. Um, but they should be falling back. Also at the same time, even though this works as a silhouette, that blue is also very saturated. I might um, push that back so it's not as eye-catching. Because um, ultimately, like in this last panel, I mean, I like how she pops and I like how Flash pops, uh, but they should also be the most saturated things in the panel. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, you have really strong rendering. Um, you definitely can. You have a you know, pleasing color palette, uh, I would just, you know, start thinking about how you can use that palette to emphasize the storytelling and the composition and just to start making better color choices, you know, where you put, like, these colors. Um, but ultimately, yeah, really great stuff, and I hope these comments help. I hope you found that video useful. Please check out some of our previous videos for more tips and tricks. Also, head over to our website where you'll be able to find our online video courses, blog posts, link to social media, and a lot more. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you next time.